With all the hype surrounding the Huawei P20 and P20 Pro as of late, I wanted to take a look at its other flagship, the Mate 10 Pro. That's the premium flagship smartphone I unboxed and reviewed about three months ago. I wanted to see how well it would hold up. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my revisit of the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Coming up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I have a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. The Mate 10 Pro retails for $799, but as of late, I've been seeing it as low as $699, maybe even less. I'll put the latest pricing in the link below. Powering the Mate 10 Pro is the Kirin 970 CPU. It's got 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. It is like a branded dual camera setup on the back. We'll talk more about how well the cameras have held up over the last three months. The build is very solid and its glass and metal design is very premium and very high-end looking. You're looking at a 6-inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 2160 by 1080. That's an 18 by 9 aspect ratio and has 402 pixels per inch. It's covered in Gorilla Glass as well as having an 80.9% screen to body ratio. Because this is an AMOLED display, you're going to get those very deep inky blacks and the very vibrant punchy colors. It colors the coral gamut really well at 147% sRGB. That's excellent. And having used this device for the past three months, I can say that display is simply gorgeous. It's held up really well, and it does come with a pre-applied screen protector, so I don't have many scratches, if at all, on it right now. That's pretty good. And Huawei paid a lot of attention to the details, such as the raised grooves on the power button. The buttons are all metal, and they feel really good. This is a very well-made, very premium high-end phone. And I love the fact that it has the infrared port to control your home theater or your television in your living room, something you don't normally see anymore on smartphones. The fingerprint sensor is located on the back, in the middle, placement is very good, worked well, setup was easy, and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. Overall, nice implementation on the fingerprint sensor. And because of the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, it actually feels comfortable in the hands due to its narrower design that you get in the Mate 9 from last year. And it has an IP67 rating, making it dust and water resistant up to 1 meter for 30 minutes. I love the Mate 10 Pro cameras. The dual camera setup on the back is a 12 megapixel main shooter along with a 20 megapixel monochrome shooter. They're both dual f1.6, which is really excellent for those shallow depth of field photos. Now there's a lot going on with this camera with a plethora of options and there are plenty of videos out there that go into further detail. Over the last three months, I've gotten to know this cameras pretty well and they've been pretty good. I especially like the wide aperture and portrait modes. I thought they did a nice job on the bokeh or blurred background effect. I really like this Leica camera setup on the back. The dual cameras have held up really well for the past three months. I think they're some of the best implementations you're going to find in a smartphone right now, rivaling that of the iPhone 10 and of course the Pixel 2 XL, two of the best in the business. Now I really think this is a shade below those two, but not very far behind. I think uh, Huawei's made some real strides in their cameras in both regular and low light situations. I think with a nicely lit environment, you get some really stunning photos. In low lit situations, I think it did well also. That's in part to its artificial intelligence that makes the scene shooting a little bit better. And having a monochrome secondary shooter certainly has its benefits, producing some excellent black and white photos. Panoramic shots also look really spectacular in my opinion. And you can shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second. I thought it shot very well. I thought it was very stable. It didn't look too jittery. It's employing some sort of image stabilization. And I thought the overall quality was pretty decent even in low light situations. That's pretty good to have 4K on this device. 
and I was equally impressed with the front-facing 8 megapixel shooter, great for taking selfies and for front-facing video. I thought the image was clear, the portrait mode is really good, I thought that it's great for selfies and when you need to do Skype video and video conferencing as well. Overall, nice job Huawei, held up really well for the last three months. The Mate 10 Pro sports stereo speakers. There's a speaker on the bottom and there's one in the earpiece for stereo sound. I thought it was very good, there was a hint of bass, the mids were decent and overall had pretty good volume. I'm pretty impressed with these speakers overall. Unfortunately, there's no 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so you'll have to use the supplied adapter to use your regular headphones. But they also supply you with USB-C earbuds. It's running Android Oreo and the EMUI. Now, EMUI does have a bit of a learning curve. There's a lot of features packed into this skin, and overall, I think it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of EMUI. I know some people really love it, some people hate it. I'm sort of in the middle with this, as far as whether or not I think it's great. I actually like to put my own skins on it, say a Nova Launcher Prime or something to that effect. But for those that want a lot of rich features that allow to give you a lot of customization controls, this may be your ticket. But one thing is certain, there's a lot going on with EMUI. Now the Kirin 970 has held up well over the last three months. Performance has been very good on this device. Navigating the OS was very fluid. There was no lag. Overall, very flagship level performance. As you can see by these benchmarks that I ran in my initial review, it's pretty much held true for the past three months. Gaming, high-end stuff on this smartphone handled it without any issues. And without a doubt, having 6 gigabytes of RAM certainly helps with performance. The Mate 10 Pro's exceptional battery life is one big reason why you'd opt for this machine over other top flagships. Its 4000 mAh battery delivered 14 hours and 33 minutes of web surfing on T-Mobile's LTE network. It beat the Note 8, the Google Pixel 2 XL, the iPhone 10, and the iPhone 8 Plus. That's pretty impressive. Huawei's also packed in a reverse charging mode, allowing you to top off other devices using the Mate 10 Pro's battery. Now with the included supercharge adapter, the Mate 10 Pro can reach a 60% charge from empty in about 30 minutes. The full charge, you're looking at around an hour and a half. Now I pointed out in my initial review the lack of wireless charging as a negative and after using it for three months I can say it's bothered me a little bit because I use it on my iPhone 10 and on my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and I really like it. I like the fact that you just put it into the Qi charger and it just works. You don't have to worry about fumbling with any kind of cord. Unfortunately the, this device does not have wireless charging. Hopefully in their next iteration they will have it. And the other thing I'm not crazy about, it's lack of expandable storage. There is no micro SD card slot and I kind of missed it during this three months. I like to be able to have expandable storage, although this does have 128 gigabytes of internal storage, which should be more than enough for most. But every so often I'd like to use that micro SD card slot on my other devices, something you can't do on this device. And perhaps the biggest issue with the Huawei Mate 10 Pro is availability. You can no longer get it from Best Buy and it's not being carried by any of the major carriers here in the US, which is a bit of a shame because this is an excellent flagship smartphone. I'm not going to get involved in that political discussion of who is right, who is wrong in this issue. I'll let the political pundits deal with that. But the good news is it's available via Amazon. I'll put my affiliate link below. Going through my link will help this channel out as I do get a small commission. Not much, but it certainly helps this channel produce these videos going forward. Any help is certainly appreciated. So after three months of use, can I recommend the Mate 10 Pro? And the answer is absolutely. This is still an excellent flagship here in 2018. We're already in May, and I can tell you that this is still better than most Android phones out there, if not one of the best. And it's held up well over these past three months, and I have no hesitation recommending it. So what do you think about the Huawei Mate 10 Pro? I actually really love this phone. I, I loved it three months ago and I love it now. It's held up really well over the past three months. It's got an excellent AMOLED display. It's got excellent performance, very good battery life as we demonstrated, 
everything you'd want in a premium smartphone. Excellent build quality, good sound coming out of the audio, negatives being lack of a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, no wireless charging, and availability here in the United States is in question. But I did show you where you can get it. You can get it from Amazon, you can get it from Newegg, and from other outlets such as B&H and so forth. So it is available to be had here in the United States. Uh, it's unfortunate that none of the major carriers have picked it up. It really is an excellent smartphone, and I, I hope more of you get a chance to check it out because it really is that good. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. What do you think of the Mate 10 Pro? I am curious to know. Now, I do have the Huawei P20 in the house. I will be doing that review in the next day or so, so stay tuned for that, followed by the P20 Pro, which I'm really looking forward to. But both the P20 and P20 Pro, so far, from the initial reviews that I've seen, look really good. So stay tuned for my take on it. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.